Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I want to go over all of the collections and where they are located because throughout some of the lobbies that I've been going into and just like having to go to other places, I've been seeing a lot of people like ask like how do you get this or how do you get that and today I just want to show you how to find all the items from the collection. Most of them are very simple to find and then some of them are kind of harder to get so you'll have to have to get those later on in the game but I hope you enjoy I hope this helps a lot good luck finding everything so first off is the farming collection so farming collection is probably the easiest one to go for originally and farming collection is very helpful for the scaling also because you do gain health from it so if you want to get easy a few maybe 10 to 20 health try going for farming kind of early on so you can just keep leveling that up within the farming there are 17 different items that you can go for so from like wheat carrots potatoes to nether wort in the nether and then cactus sugarcane inside of the mushroom desert so with all of these items you want to head over to the hub so when starting over here on the hub, you want to go toward this map. And this this map actually helps a ton. So whenever looking at it, you are at the arrow. So basically, for the farming area, it is that wheat right there, and then those two islands back there. So for the first one, it is wheat and seed. So this is the farm. This is the place where you just farm wheat and seeds along with just gaining your first few levels of farming. Next, you want to go, to go back here toward the barn. This is the barn. So there are more wheat and seeds to farm here and then along this path you will see the melon and pumpkin area. This area all around here spawns pumpkins and melon. Next is Cows, pigs, and chickens. Cows, pigs, and chickens spawn around this little area in this little barn or over in this little field. After this part, it is potatoes and carrots. So if you go back along here, you will see the carrots along this side of the mountain, and then over here are the potatoes. Just a little disclaimer, potatoes are really good to go for early on, so try getting the potato minion because of the hot potato book. The hot potato books do sell for quite a lot. They are very useful within late game. So it's also just kind of easy money. Next is the mushroom desert. So a small note for whenever entering the mushroom desert, you will have to be farming level five. So in this mushroom desert, there are cocoa beans right off the bat and then sheep spawning over here. And then as well over here are the rabbits. And then if you go this way, there are sugar cane, and then you can actually start fishing, which is another collection area we'll go over later. So, cane spawns all the way around this and all around here. Cactuses spawn all along the desert area. And then mushrooms on the underside of that and then on top of that. And lastly is the nether wart. This is the Blazing Fortress, so you enter it from the portal in the Spider Den. So with the Nether War, you want to head up these stairs. There are about four or five different locations for it. Either you can go this way or up this way or up this. But one of the easier places are going up these stairs and then straight that way. And watch out for the withers and then if you also take a turn over here there are like three different areas for farming so when coming over here you want to go this way and there are three different areas one right here one in those stairway that stairway down there and this stairway right up here so these are like three main areas but like I watch out if you are a newer player trying to collect all these stuff and that is all of the farming so next is the mining collection 
the mining collection is just basically any ores or any blocks. So with the mining collection, there are 16 different items ranging from cobblestone for the easiest and then the end. Most of these items are relatively easy to get. It's just some of them you actually have to travel for, but there are, there's one item that will take a little work to get. It, it is the ice. The ice will take you a little while to get, and I will go over that whenever. So back at the map, you are at the arrow again, but you just want to go to the opposite way that you went for the farm. You head this way. and into the coal mine. This is just where to start getting levels and try mining some stone and cobblestone for one collection and then the coal. So if you come along this way, you will arrive at the gold mine. As you enter the gold mine, it is very, just follow this path, past the lazy miner, and then down here is iron, and then more coal. And then as you go farther and farther down, there will spawn gold. So anywhere below a certain level, there will be gold spawn. But as you enter the gold mine, after you find all the gold, iron, and more coal, and then you can also just farm more stone here, is the deep cavern. You have to be mining level 5 to enter. So when entering the deep cavern, so this path, and then the first mine is the gunpowder mine. The gunpowder mine is gold, more gold, more iron, and even more coal. So with this mine, you have to actually go down levels uh, by yourself first, and then you can unlock the ways to get down from with the lift operator. With the lift operator, it's just an easier way to get down to every single level. The next level is the lapis quarry. With the lapis quarry, it is just lapis. Next is the redstone pigment den. Basically, just redstone is upgrading your Thompson bag, which is very helpful for later on in the game. So I'd recommend going for redstone. Next is slime hill. So slime hill is just the last slimes and emerald. Lastly is the obsidian sanctuary which is more diamond, diamond blocks, and then obsidian. So anywhere just around here, you can get all three of those items. Next is back into the nether. And you want to head this way over this little lava, past these pigmen, and this is basically anywhere around here you can get nether rack. So Another rack is really simple to get, it's not really that useful unless you want to decorate with it, but other than that it's really useless. There is the glowstone all along here, and then as well as quartz along the walls. So with gravel, which is next, it is very simple to get. So after you're in the spider den, you want to go this way, toward the end, and it's all along in here. So, for the end, it's really self-explanatory, it's just endstone and more obsidian to mine. Next is the combat and mobs. For this one, we're just going to start off at the end again. So, this is just pearl-wise. These only really drop pearls, so with these endermen, as you go lower and lower down, they have more and more health. This top row has 4,500 health. The second row has about 6,000 health, the bottom row has uh, 9,000 health, and then the zealots all have 13,000. So back in the deep caverns, one of the easier, well kind of easier, it's just if they pop up or not, is for the gunpowder, gunpowder mines and creepers randomly spawn, they, they, they're called sticky creepers, so whenever they pop out they just explode basically so you have a few seconds to kill them next is in the lapis quarry it is just zombies pigmen don't do anything so they don't really help for any type of progression they don't drop rotten flesh 
so I prefer not to actually go for these that often, so they're good for XP levels. But other than that, not really that useful. Next, next is Slime Hill. Slime Hill is in the name, so it's just slimes that I'm here. Just a, lady, a little disclaimer that the slimes do make you take a lot of knockback and you will take a lot more damage if you do not have the feather talisman or feather falling. And then along in the diamonds reserve and the obsidian sanctuary, the zombies and skeletons spawn here. So next is going to be the spider den, which is the way to get to the blazing fortress, which is that whole entire mess over there. And that has more skeletons, which you can farm. Which they aren't that prevalent, but they are more prevalent in the back corner of the map where the bones are, and then on top of that little mountain over there. And then that's just to farm skeleton the bones, and then you can also get the spider eyes and the string. With the nether items, you go up here. Once again, this area just has wither skeletons, which are not that useful, and then up on taller places, and then down over in that area down there, spawn the blazes, and then over back here is the magma cube. Next is the gas, which spawn only at night, until about 5 to 6 a.m. during game time. They usually spawn one right there, and then one over here. Next is foraging, one of the easier ones to collect. When you enter the oak forest, you will see the lumberjack, and he will give you a quest to give you an axe, which is kind of useful, but not as much. But this is just the oak all along here, and then all the way around there. And next is the birch forest. To get to all of the islands, you have to go along into the floating island. So the birch forest is the first one out of all the other five along here. Next is the spruce forest, which is just along here. And then if you go along this path, you go to the jungle island. And along in the jungle island, this is a very farmable place because most people try going for the jungle eggs which is just a wooden axe and it could mine a lot of the wood at once, it's like that. And then next is the savannah woodland. So savannah woodland is just savannah trees, just to get acacia wood in general. The, I, I don't prefer going for the savannah wood like right away because it's not that helpful for like progression with items. And then lastly is the dark oak thicket which is one of the islands where most people tend to go to and farm because first off there's a lot of trees and then there are a lot of the crafts to go with it that are kind of good especially like growth books so lastly on all of most of the items it is the fishing with the fishing collection there are a lot of different items that you can go for but mainly they're all relatively easy to get once you get started with the fishing, but if you want to get them all leveled up pretty fast, go for the fishing minion. So, but with this, you can just fish all these items, especially clay, which people most, most people get confused of how to get it. So, if you want to get clay, just fish, and you will gain it, or clay and lily pads, and then the sponge, there is a sponge rod where you can get more like a 20% more sponge rate and then there are there is a prismarine rod where you can get more prismarine crystals and shards from those. So I'd actually recommend going for the fishing. So one of the harder ones to go for is ice and sand. So for the sand, if you go for the desert island, that's how you typically get the sand. So it's not really that hard to craft, it's just you have to actually buy the sand from one of the NPCs, which is the farmer NPC. So that's just how you get that sand to get to, to make this island for your island, so you can actually get the sand unlocked. It also helps with cane and cactus because they both grow on top of the island. And then with ice, ice isn't that useful, 
to be honest. But if you want to just collect it, just get the minion or whatever to level it up a little bit, just to get more minion slots, it is you require the Frostwalker enchant on boots, and then just walk across I like the water to turn it ice, and then mine that on your. You have to do it on your island as well, so just mine it with a silk touch pickaxe and that's how you get the ice well i hope you all enjoyed this i hope this helped you a little bit so because a lot of people always have trouble with finding this i hope you stay tuned throughout the whole video to help you find them hopefully your collections are full now and i will see you all next time for another video or stream bye